Hello and welcome to the Play vs. Fall 2022 High School Championship Series featuring Hearthstone. Once again, we are back with the Central Region Hearthstone community. These schools are be battling it head to head. And once again, I've got my co-commentator here, Dragon Rider. Yes. No, yes, from right yeah. yes, right away. <laughs> Whichever. <laughs> to my left here, how you doing, yo? I am doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited. Uh, I know we just set this off broadcast, but I wish I had mm. something like this when I was in high school. <sighs> and I am I am super thrilled though that I get to to cast this and see this. And it's gonna be really exciting because we just had a completely new expansion drop yesterday, including a brand new class. So I do see at least one deck with uh, the new class, so we're definitely going to get to see that. Uh, very, very exciting. But not only that, this is the championship as well. So, uh, you know, regional for Central, like you mentioned. So super excited. Mm. This is like they've been playing for months at this point uh, to kind of work through multiple metas, work through multiple, multiple weeks of play to get to this point is very exciting. Yeah, putting that work seriously. Like when you have the chance as a community, as a school, nonetheless, yeah. to have the time to put into a game like this, build a team, build a plan, and then go through a bracket to the point where you are where you are now. December seventh. It's been a long run. <laughs> but Westside High School and North Rock Creek are here to play their hearts out today. It'll be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, let's talk about that a little bit. You mentioned that it is team. So Breaking down the format of this, yeah, it's Hearthstone. It is a conquest format, but interestingly, uh, no ban, but three player teams, each team will be bringing three decks of three, you know, a, a deck, uh, three different classes to represent for that conquest format. And once they win with the deck, that is no longer available for them to win with. So they do have to get a win with each of the three decks to try to actually take the whole series down. Um, but also with this and being a team, uh, we have noted there are going to be uh, one pilot per deck, which is also interesting. They're in a call together. They're going to be able to, you know, kind of work through plays and, and co-op these games as a team. And likewise, on the other side, you know, same thing's going to be happening. But uh, the chance to also have each of the members pilot a deck, uh, sometimes decks, especially those that can maybe be a little APM heavy or have a lot of you know micro decisions. Uh, sometimes in those team events, it can come down to whoever is the pilot. You just gotta you gotta push the buttons. You gotta spam that mouse and just start <laughs> throwing cards out there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So great <laughs> to see uh, each of the players get a chance to uh, pilot one of these decks. Totally. No, yeah, it's also really cool at the fact that it's not only a team battle, but on top of that, these decks are limited use. So any yeah. loss that the team incurs, whoever lost with whatever deck they're using, let's say for example, uh, someone's lost with a warlock deck, then they cannot that team in its entirety cannot use that warlock deck for the rest of the set. That's it. You're done. You gotta fall, fall back on your druid or your hunter, and best of luck to you then. <laughs> I think it's actually the other way around. Whichever player uh, wins, whichever deck wins, that one is the <gasps> Wait, one really? that's off the table. Yeah. Did I misread? Uh, oh. So, yeah, that's a, that's very common for conquest formats. Ah. Um, but it, it does mean that these players have to be a bit more versed in multiple classes and multiple decks. Um, they can't mm. just rely on like a you know one trick deck kind of thing to to get them through the whole series. They're going to have to maneuver multiple decks and a variety of different matchups because if maybe they don't win the first game, uh, you know they're going to have to be able to <laughs> try to get in the we'll second one. But we are yeah. jumping into the game yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, so I know I misread it a little bit, but. The actual version of the winners losing their deck is even more interesting to me at that point because we're able to see, like you mentioned, that variety of skill sets. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, looking here, it does look like we have West Side on the top uh, on this Death Knight. That is a brand new class here. And on the bottom, we have North Rock Creek on this Warlock. Now, let me tell you, I. I love seeing this um, imp warlock here. Uh, imps <laughs> and imp curse lock is actually kind of been like my pet deck for the last couple of months. So love to see that, especially the fact that uh, it's kind of bringing back an old classic of just getting on board with minions and trying to buff them up and hit face. It's gonna be a little bit difficult mm. though with that definitely starting at 40 health. 
Now, is the Warlock class, do you believe, more of a minion swarm deck, or are you looking for more long-term endgame upgrades? Um, so this version, let me just make sure that I have uh, the correct deck list here for mm. this Warlock. This one specifically is really focused on the minions themselves. So very much kind of like that board swarm deck. Uh, getting on board, going as wide as possible. The board can only hold seven minions, but if they can fill that up, you know, with five, six, seven minions, try to buff them up. There's multiple cards in the deck that uh, buff those imps. There's synergies that allow them to draw cards based on imps on the board. Uh, so a lot of potential synergy there, that uh, impending catastrophe in hand, that two mana spell is the one that's going to allow them to kind of refill their hand if they have imps on board. And that shady bartender that was just drawn there is one that kind of buffs. So yeah, this Warlock deck, very, very important for them to get on board, stick a large board, and then build it up from there. Mana's only building so far. We're very early into the match for them. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, unfortunately, a deck like this, it being turn three and they have no board is is a little scary. It's a little sad <laughs> from the uh, from the Warlock perspective there for North Rock Creek. Uh, but on the other side, starting at that 40 health, this is a Renathal uh, 40 card deck with the Death Knight. And it does look like they are running a triple blood. Now, Death Knight is that mm. new class that has come in. And with that new class, there are different runes, uh, Blood, Unholy, and Frost runes. Uh, and these ones, each card kind of has a different requirement and deck building restrictions. Holy. So yeah, this one though, <laughs> is this, okay. Now, have you ever heard of aggro decks? More or less, yes. Okay, well, the Warlock is the one that's supposed to be the aggro. It's supposed <laughs> to be the aggressive deck. And uh, it has it has totally been the opposite in this matchup. We're seeing here that Westside has just gotten on the board with some relatively small minions, but they have just been able to apply consistent pressure and now pushing damage with a weapon here, uh, putting North Creek Rock Creek already down to thirteen. I mean, at this point in time, we're again super early to the match, and being this far down when you need to get the ball rolling is only terrifying. Our storm's gonna have to pull out some either some real lucky cards or get some good investments and hope that Flom slows down for a bit here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there is somewhat, I suppose, of a comeback mechanic with that Denathrius that was just strong there, but unfortunately that costs 10 mana. <laughs> it is only mm. turn four. It's still quite a ways to go before they can play that. And on the other side, though, I mean, West Side Hearthstone not slowing down at all. That hero power, that new hero power, putting out a 1 1. It does have charge, gets to hit face. It dies at the end of the turn, but that's still an extra damage every turn. Ooh, but here we go. Throw a minion summon. Hope we get something started here. If we can get some buffs on board. Yeah. Right, there's some damage coming. It, Unless. Yeah, there's a lot of removal chaos <laughs> right now. Yeah. You're, you're right, though. That was the play. That was the get on board, hope that these, these, imps, these minions stick on the board and that it is going to be good enough. But uh, with the, the time that passed, like you mentioned, it, it's already kind of getting a little far into the game. Yeah, it's only turn six. But for something like this in Warlock to be such an aggressive deck and it being turn six and they are at 11, they have no board until playing this Rafam. And they have to hope that whatever oh, they play no. stays. <laughs> yeah. Well, Death Knight has some removal here. Uh, that is what this blood deck is all about. Just tons of I removal. Uh, that eight mana Skullcracker card on the board is, or in the hand as well, is another board removal body that also leaves board. behind the body. It will kill off everything else on the board, but it will stay there as a 5-5 five, five body. So, this is, this is a little bit of a predicament here for North Rock Creek. Yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of opportunities here for us to make a comeback, but I we'll hope that, that part of the cards is nice. Now, <laughs> on the side of Death Knight uh, and Flom's uh, deck here, do you believe more so Death Knight's made, uh, from what I'm seeing so far, to be more of a counter deck to eliminate other endgames or to focus on their own endgame if that's possible? 
Uh, well, again, this kind of goes back to that uh, the rune system for these. Uh, as I mentioned, there's three different types of runes. Now, mm. this deck is running a full three blood runes. Uh, there is potential and possibility for Death Knights to actually kind of combine their runes. They might include cards that only have two blood runes. And maybe for their third rune for their deck building, they might include one frost rune, for example. Um, but this deck specifically, this full triple blood deck, uh, really leans into a lot of removal, a lot of life gain and healing, uh, and just mm. kind of, in a way, just kind of whittles away what the opponent is doing until there's nothing else that the opponent can do. Yeah, I mean, being able to eliminate options like that on one hand is, of course, very frustrating to play against, but on the other hand, when you have so clearing strong. damage output, as we've seen <laughs> yep, in this current turn, <laughs> it's um, somewhat disheartening to try to find a real plan against it. Yeah, and as well, again, this deck uh, for North Rock Creek here on this Warlock, there, this is not the kind of deck that is built to have answers for what the opponent is doing. So it's a little bit hard pressed. The Sylvanas definitely is an answer here. It does get to destroy that five side, but they're also in a kind of desperate position at this point where they have nothing on board. They're at seven health and a five five almost certainly means death next turn. Yeah. I mean, at least we do have a Phoenix Imp Circle in the back to try and hopefully get some more on the board. But at this point in time, what can you really do other than Hope we get some more stuff on the board and we'll clear it again. How much more does Flum really have in the tank to be clearing? Yeah. Well, I, I think the answer to that is ultimately ah, going to be quite a bit. They the still, <laughs> yeah, they still have quite a bit. Uh, Astalor here, one of the new neutral legendaries from the uh, new expansion that just came out yesterday. Uh, mm. Very powerful card. It's got uh, three kind of cards or three stages within the one card. As we saw, that first card being played was a 2-2, uh, taking advantage of the new mechanic, Mana Thirst. Uh, if they play that card when they have a certain mana later in the game, it has an additional effect. And the stages get increasingly uh, more difficult to deal with. They deal more damage. Uh, but this Denathrius, I mentioned it earlier, we've gotten to turn 10. Yeah. It hit it. We survived at least, and even the board is a little bit, but is it just a stall or is it actually an answer? Let's see. And that patchwork coming down. Patchwork comes down, it does uh, remove a minion from the board, from the hand, and from the deck. So that's what we just saw. There's three Ooh. minions getting removed all in one swing and the body left behind to uh, really kind of, again, continue forcing some answers from North Rock Creek, which uh, again, this deck is not built to answer bodies on the other side. It, it's built to create its own boards. Mm. Now we have the board once again filled out. It shouldn't be the hardest clear on the side of Flom, but can we make this happen? Can we make something out of this situation? At least Arsenal is supposed to be out. Yeah. Oh. You know, and, and, and with our special privileges of this caster vision here, we get to see both hands. And I am just, I'm kind of groaning in, in a little bit of heartache here for North Rock mm. Creek because there are still removal cards in Westside Hearthstone's oh, hand here that. Uh, multiple removals there's a corpse explosion that can go off and kill off minions oh the denathri is just drawn uh that eight mana astalor that we see uh now having 10 mana that second mana thirst effect is in effect and if that gets played it's going to deal 16 damage split amongst all of the enemies but yeah that corpse explosion just making quick work of that board mm so much build up and then just wiped away again the death yeah. knight <laughs> seems to have a relentless amount of core clearing ability yeah yeah that's the power of that triple blood deck uh, it, it doesn't typically provide a lot of gigantic threats on its own but we do see the, a couple of those few big bodies in hand already just kind of waiting to come down at this point uh, but for north rock creek again <laughs> They need to get on board, and, and you said it too. They know they need to stick a board here and just hope that it does not get cleared. Hope that 
there's been enough board removal coming down from the other side that finally maybe this board will stick. Got a pretty good build up going so far, plenty of HP, a lot of damage on board as well. We gotta wait a turn. Yeah. Just hope. <laughs> hope and pray. That's, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes that's the aggressive deck too. You, that's what you gotta do. You, you have to just play to the no! hope of the top deck. <laughs> Oh, where's the heart of the cards now, Super? <laughs> this is so brutal. Oh. I believe in the power. I believe in the power of our store, but this is just like seeing someone build up a Jenga tower, a tower of cards, anything, and then just have somebody go over and kick it over and over. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Arthas, uh, as the Lich King just said, yeah, Frostborn doesn't <laughs> like your Jenga tower, oh, and he just, he, he just slashed Frostborn <laughs> and, and killed that tower multiple times. <laughs> Here. Here we go once again. The build out is happening. You know it and you love it. I love this use of that location to buff. Uses the last Ooh, the bartender? Uh, Yeah, that bartender comes down. Uh, the location only had one use left of it, so it using that last use, it got it off the board, gave space for that bartender, but again, these top decks just don't no. stop. All those buffs. All direct damage space. Uh, there's oh no shot. 44 HP difference. 20 HP difference at this point. And no cards now left in the deck for North Rock Creek. That means that they are going to start taking fatigue damage. But honestly, I don't think there's enough uh, damage in this hand that they're going to be able to close out the game anytime soon. Yeah, when you're out of cards and you've been cleared over and over and probably about to see another clear at this point. Can we really see any options remaining apart from either? I don't know. It, it's actually I really can't imagine the options left when all we have in the deck is low cost and looking over at Flom. It's just get another clear. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this is I think just kind of the end here for North Rock. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brutal way to go, but. You know, I guess the consolation for this does mean that uh, with this Conquest format of the winning deck no longer being able to be used, at mm. least the Death Knight's off the table now after this game, so yeah. they're not going to face it again. That is definitely some very good news. And of course, it's also very important to take from this game the knowledge of how your opponents play. Now, Death Knight and Triple Blood deck is one thing that, of course, you have to take into account and understand and learn from. But not only is this not going to change a lot in the next game, as we have to use a whole new different deck, or what's that first game, but on top of that, a whole new player. Like, you've learned a lot from this match, take what you can, absorb it, and for the next one, come back stronger. It's all good. You have a team for a reason. It's not just you out there. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, okay, speaking of, like, the team and also what they did get to, uh, we do want to also shout out and, and talk about this because I think this is amazingly cool, mm. uh, is that there actually is kind of a, kind of an initiative, I guess, uh, going into this uh, called Hearthstone Unlock, and the Play Versus has actually been working with Blizzard to be able to actually get packs and it, their own account. It's basically a loan account for these teams. So each team has an account that was uh, provided with packs for uh, all of the expansions within Standard so that these players can actually be able to build these decks. And that does include packs from the new set that just dropped yesterday. So we did get to see them build uh, <laughs> that Death Knight deck and use that on one side. So, you know, again, because that win, that Death Knight is going to be off the table. But, you know, it's absolutely amazing to be able to see that these teams have these card collections to be able to try out and play these decks. And it's also one collective account for the three members to be able to actually use, work together, and they don't have to rely on, you know, a card collection from one player, especially uh, when they're all kind of rotating through piloting these decks as well. Yeah, no, nah, I guess... My only question is about, you mentioned rotation. I want to see if, I don't remember if it was the case, but I'm assuming we're getting a new player in for North Rock players. And we're not going to see the same person play again, but we might. I'm not sure if that was included in the rules. 
but um, I do want to hope to see as much variety here as possible and let, allow the whole team to play because, I mean, why not? Throw everyone at them. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's, uh, we are just waiting for them to jump back into the next game oh, as we get into it here. Uh, Hunter nice for West Side. I love it. Love me some Hunter. And we do see Northrock actually stayed on this Warlock deck. Oh, yeah. Our show's back again. Well, we know the game plan. Get on board. Get off the end. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if they can do it this time. I would love to see Warlock reach their full potential. The end game seems pretty interesting. Gotta hope that we don't have closely. even better clearing on the side of Hunter and Ace of Spades is uh, piloting here. Yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about this Hunter deck a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this Hunter deck here utilizes a, a decent amount, or at least a handful, of the new cards from the March of the Lich King expansion that just came out yesterday. Uh, but. The really interesting thing about this deck is, I would say, some of these arcane spells, but most notably the minion Shock Spitter. Now, Shock Spitter is a minion that will have uh, a battle cry of dealing damage. That damage can be directed wherever the player wants to send it, so they can send it at Northrop Creek's face. Uh, to deal damage there, but the damage will increase the more that Westside attacks with weapons as that hunter. Uh, so it has an incredibly powerful effect. And uh, even in the last, you know, the expansion's like just over one day old at this point, uh, it's already kind of, kind of become a menace, I would say, in the community. So um, very interesting to, uh, to see this but have you there it is in hand have you gotten the chance to look at this shock spitter card <laughs> not really at all i so my, my knowledge is pretty really limited to the general basics of each type and each overall deck um going in we're deeper into cards do you elaborate for me please yeah so shock spitter is this minion it's in hand there you can see that lightning on it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we also see the hunter, uh, the, the goal of it here really is to attack as much as they can with weapons as the hunter, which I would say is a little bit different than the hunter builds that we've kind of seen over the last several expansions, uh, which is typically has been more focused on dealing damage in other ways uh, and not as much through weapons. But this hunter here, we've seen them equipped weapons. They just attack every turn, and they're building up the damage that the shock spitter is going to do, and they can send that damage right to North Rock Creek space. Um, but I mean, North Rock Creek really trying hard to stay on board. At least they have a board more than they did the, the last game. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned that it's more focused on weapon damage as well. Would you say that the hunter is less focused on overall minion building and more so just getting that slow tick of uh, face damage going on? Yeah, yeah, I would say uh, typically that is, and it's kind of interesting as well with this um, kind of damage, like weapon damage focused build. Uh, like we see here, they just attacked, Westside just attacked into a minion. And this is kind of an interesting um, choice, I think, for players who have been kind of playing the Shock Spitter deck is when do they want to send their weapon into a minion and just, you know, they're still getting that uh, attack and tick for that Shock Spitter. Or do they want to attack into the opponent's face and add even more damage, like you're mentioning? Uh, mm. But this matchup specifically, I think, is is kind of great here. Westside choosing to say, no, you know, not letting Northrop on the board is more important than me sending that three damage to their face. So they mm. did choose to clear the minion. And after what we saw last game, I it's hard to disagree with them. Yeah. I'm surprised we just saw those two minions attack against um, the one orc there. Now, I, 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 it's part of my ignorance here, but why would you sacrifice uh, two minions to try and just tick away at that one? Yeah, so um, part of that is a relatively new mechanic yeah. called Infuse, uh, and we see that these three threes now on the board, uh, when that minion is played, it has a battle cry that summons a another 3-3, three, three. but if it's infused, which means that friendly minions have died while that was in hand, 
uh, when a certain number ah. of minions get killed, well, that's the hand, you get an extra body out of it. So uh, they traded those to be able to actually get an extra 3-3. Three, three. Okay, now I understand. That's actually really cool to see. That kind of mechanic can be uh, extremely game-changing for a deck like Warlock, as we're talking about, for yeah. the amount of minion summons you need and the amount of damage output you require. Yeah, absolutely. Um, created some really interesting uh, scenarios, too, where it does uh, kind of create you know, opportunities for players to make trades, which look kind of odd, like we just saw. It. Like, well, mm. is that something you really want to do? But uh, the benefit of you kill off some one ones, but you get three threes on the board instead, uh, ultimately. So it is a little bit better of a mechanic there, but that Tamsin coming out, one of those hero cards, uh, cleared a little bit that was on the board and drew more cards here for more for North Rock, which now means that there's more cards in hand for them to try to get back on the board and rebuild their board. Yeah, I mean, also we're pretty much in the money here in terms of summoning costs. Seven points already for the mana cost, or seven points for the uh, mana storage. Bio Library getting played now. So we're looking at a potential. Here we go. Live, we're gonna buff them yeah, eventually. Yeah. Job's done. That file library going to buff there. Ah, now I see how that works. I thought it was gonna do a across the board buff, but it's towards one for each man. Okay, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that one <laughs> specifically is. And here is that shock spitter again. There to come down, dealing damage based on how many times what side attack. Wow, so Ow. much damage. That was that was truly brutal. I mean, we saw just how much of a shutdown there was for the Warlock deck from Death Knight, but seeing Hunter just melt through the, the mouth pool. Yeah. Dang. Dang. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? Even, too, you mentioned that uh, talking about where Hunter wants to send the damage, and in that mm. game we saw, I mean, they did not send even all of their weapon attacks to the face either they attacked into yeah. some of the those warlock minions and just kept that damage going in one way or another and yeah towards the end it just adds up such an incredibly powerful uh synergy there but that does mean that now they've won with that hunter uh so they no longer have that death knight they no longer have that hunter and they are in a 2-0 position in this series yeah. this is match point like one more game and you're walking out of here champs this is it yo give it your all yeah that's incredible so that does mean that it looks like they have a shaman deck uh left Ooh. and i see some cards in here i'm pretty excited for one of those is we'll talk about that. Talk about that. which is he's an undead murloc i mean you can't get better than that <laughs> but, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the new legendaries from the expansion that just came out yesterday and he only co he costs five mm. but that is where this shaman deck tops out that is the highest cost thing in the deck yes huh. so if you know if north rock stays on that warlock we're gonna have like an aggressive deck aggressive board based deck versus an aggressive board based deck and that is my absolute favorite kind of matchup so i am really excited to see if uh, north rock stays on that warlock at this point yeah. or not now yeah i mean arstra has been taking on the entirety of um west side here so we'll have to see if their adaptation is going to come in clutch here or we're going to see just one person trying to carry the entire ship <laughs> and how strong they can really carry that right like yeah sean with the warlock it sounds like it could be a potentially bad matchup it could be a potentially good matchup based on how they play players are all different styles are all different there's no like even though you might see the same deck come out they're never going to play exactly the same yeah and here we go jumping in Northrock did stay on this warlock you know i i hope that we get to see this warlock win a game here i i would love mm. to see it i'm not a fan of three zero shutouts either like I, no you know, i want to see them give it their all i want to see them take it down but this starting hand is fantastic for them if they are going to try to do that lovely so what are we getting started with here i'm seeing yeah, no imps so what are we really working with 
Yeah, so there is that one cost spell there, Wicked Shipment in hand, that actually mm. does generate some imps, so that oh. very well could come down. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they just went in on the Vile Library here, just kind of as a setup. They get it out on the board, and then they can use that to buff something up whenever they choose to. Hmm. Now, hopefully they absorb some good knowledge from last game, have the time to shock their team, make some adjustments. North Rock Creek, this is your last chance to make it count. The last game might have been a bit shorter. We didn't even get a game 10 or around 10 last game, but hopefully this one can go the distance. I'm sure it can. Yeah, and I, I love this use from Westside of using these piranhas. They know with that librarian on board, they kind of know what to expect. They know it's coming and they are not going to give North Rock Creek the chance to get on board with a large minion. So they took that opportunity to use those piranhas to clear that off. And you know, North Rock Creek says, okay, well, I will just take this chance then. I'm going to do a, a smaller buff, I suppose, onto this taunt minion here and hope that that's good enough. Mm -hmm. The Bushwalker, hopefully, able to do some damage at this point, but we're getting set up now for Cerulean. What do we have here? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the power of these new cards. Uh, that spell that was just played uh, previously put a death rattle onto their minion that uh, when that minion died, it would summon two 3 2 zombies here. And so that's what mm. we're seeing is that. You know, kill off one minion and it generates more. So it's going to be really interesting here because uh, North Rock Creek doesn't really have a lot of removal here in in their hand or in the deck as a whole. Um, and without it being in hand, they might struggle a little bit here. But uh, there's there's some answers a little bit on the other side for West Side, but they do have that Rock Gill in hand, and I'm excited to see that Rock Gill. <laughs> this could be. Pretty foot clear if we do some good damage out of here. So the totem has been played, and I understand that they don't have much more than a repeating action. Do we know? I can't quite pinpoint what that totem is. Uh, yes, that's actually, I think it was earlier this year, maybe with that rotation back in April. Uh, they mm. did change that shaman hero power a little bit, but that totem actually at the end of each turn it gives a plus one attack to another of their friendly minions on board. Um, so with only one other minion on board, it did give that plus one attack there to that good. that zombie and make it a four two instead of a three two. Um, can actually be a pretty useful totem in a deck like the shaman deck here, where they want to get on board and adding one additional attack can be kind of helpful. Mm. I mean, especially when you're going for a deck that can chain off of itself so well. We're looking at a very potential high damage. And the Warlock, you have to fast. Because you let Shaman get out of hand, or steal their cards, you <laughs> go, why not? Yes. This is what the Warlock deck has wanted to do for the last three games, and it is finally Freedom. getting to do it. <laughs> it's time! You'll love to see it. Right now. Full board could be more stacked right now. Yes. On the other side here, though, this clownfish going Let's to go make them. Yeah. It makes the next couple of Murlocs cost less. This Firemancer Florgal now coming down will deal one damage to all of the things on the other side of the board for every Murloc that's played. So if multiple Murlocs can come down here, this board is going to get cleared. Hang in there now. More draw on the side of Cerulean. Choose wisely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with that Zolner Hammer Beak on the board as well, it's uh, basically replaying that battle cry effect of discounting Murlocs. So at this point, Westside is kind of only restricted by the amount of board space that they have, and that is a complete table flip. What a wipe! Not only did they wipe, but they filled up their own board. Yeah. So that flame effect we saw doing AOA damage, not only the minions, but also the face. What was that? Yeah, so that is the effect of that uh, legendary minion Firemancer Flurgle, that third ah. minion from the left there that you see kind of... The, the Murloc that looks like he's holding up flames. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very powerful effect against another deck like this. Uh, so you know, a little bit unfortunate for North Rock Creek. 
Gotta commend them though, they have been like pouring their heart and soul into this warlock deck just yeah. trying to make it go. I do fully believe in it, but it's just getting shut. Like you see, you can see how powerful the warlock deck can be, but yeah. then it just gets shut down almost every single time here. It was doing such amazing damage already. I mean, the health pool, of course, is more in the favor of Green Star Storm. But at this point in time, how long can they hold that lead? It's already being even though. <laughs> yeah, this was a complete just reversal that that turn with the Bolner Hammer Beak and getting to clear everything. Just such an impressive, impactful turn. I mean, that that was completely game winning there for West Side. Like I said, you know, definitely gotta commend Norcross for Beak because. They, they tried so hard to get the Swarlock deck, and with the formatting of needing to get a win with each of the decks, they were going to have to get a win with this Warlock at some point that in the series. That was a mistake. Mm. It could have been a very, very strong spark to start a full run inside of North Rock Creek, but at this point in time, it's just too much. It's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. helpful to play your foot in, but this time... I'm gonna be in there. For now, yeah. your champions are the West Side Hearthstone team, Cerulean, Flom, and Jamesy Shadow. Truly, congratulations, yo. It's been a great, it's been a great match so far. Dang. <laughs> yes, that was that was an incredible showing. I, it was amazing to see that. Uh, again, this is, you know, these are high school players playing on a team together. So impressive. Honestly, and, and that level of like skill from Hearthstone or from high school players in Hearthstone, uh, amazing. I, I was so impressed by that. So love it, love it, love it. Yeah, I want to shout out once again, Play Versus production team here. And of course, the Central Region. Thank you so much for having events like this. I mean, I can't emphasize enough. We talked about it at the beginning of the stream. Having this kind of opportunity, this kind of tournament available to you in high school, bless. Oh my goodness! Like, yes. I'm so glad that we had a bracket like this, and I really hope that the players had a great time playing. And I can't wait till the next one because, I mean, hey, it's not gonna be the last one, right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Thank you so much for having us uh, be a part of this as well. It was an incredible opportunity to get to to watch this, and I can't wait to see where they go next. Yeah, totally. No, that's gonna be about it from us. Once again, this is the Play Fall 2022 High School Championship League featuring Hearthstone and featuring the Central Region's most powerful Hearthstone players we got. Now, once again, my name is Suplex Plus. You can find me at Suplex Plus on Twitter. And Dragon Rider, where can we find you, yo? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DonnyDK. That's D-A-W-N-I-E-D-K. And, uh, you know, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, all those other things. Dragon Rider TCCG. Oh yeah. But yeah, no. That's going to be about it from us. Once again, everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you to the players, coaches, production, everybody here. Hope you all had a good time. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care.